Hey everybody. Uh, so today I thought we'd take a look at uh, some of the more sophisticated things you could do with Brewfather. Uh, so Brewfather is the brewing software I've been using for quite a while now. Um, and you can integrate this with other tools uh, using their uh, public API that they publish. And so what I really wanted to do is I have uh, this uh, control software, brew control, that I want to be able to import a bunch of values from Brewfather automatically into that software uh, on brew day. So, you know, typically I'll do most of my uh, recipe design, all of my recipe design in Brewfather, but then on brew day, the actual control software for my brewery is brew control. So the first thing you need to do is uh, get into your Brewfather account, go into settings, and then on the right hand side over here, uh, you have the generate API key. Uh, so that is the first thing you need to do. That'll give you a couple fields that we'll use later in the uh, scripts that we author. Uh, to actually access the, the REST API. So I have a planned batch in Brewfather, and the script that I wrote, uh, it will filter all the, the Brewfather recipes depending on their state. So it's only going to show me the recipes that are either planned or brewing, so that makes it a lot easier for me to find what, what I'm looking for at the time. So this is a New England IPA called uh, Protostar. Uh, just kind of looking at a uh, high level recipe here. We really only have uh, two mash steps, I think, uh, plus a mash out temperature. So that's one set of variables that we want to bring into our control software. We want to bring in all the steps, how long they are, what temperatures they're at. We also, of course, want to bring in the boil time and we want to bring in the boil volume or how much we want to sparge. And those are really the main things I'm interested in bringing in at this point. Might get more sophisticated in the future. Might be nice to have some alarms for when to make hop additions uh, and maybe add, uh, you know, pull down some more times like whirlpool times. But I can do that later. For now, let's stick with uh, sparge volume or pre boil volume, uh, our mash steps, and our, our boil time pre whirlpool. Let's get rid of that and let's bring in the control software. So first thing I want to show you is this window here. So this is just built using a really simple Python uh, script using uh, a simple UI package for it. And if I click refresh list, nothing will actually change. We just have one batch that's in planning or brewing state, which is our protostar batch. And if I click that, it'll import all the values uh, into the control software here. So we can see it imports the name, it imports all our mash steps, the temperatures, the times. Uh, it imports the uh, sparge volume or pre-boil volume. And it also imports the boil time, which I already had running because I'm, I'm actually testing out some new uh, scripts in here at the same time. I can unhide some variables and you can see this is where the boil time actually got imported. And when I run my boil script, uh, it, it, it moves the value over to the clock and starts the, the countdown. So pretty cool, yeah. Uh, how do we actually get these values in here? So looking over at the Python script, uh, the first thing is this HTTP basic auth 
And these are the values that Brewfather provides you with when you generate those API keys. And you need these to be able to access your Brewfather account uh, remotely. Uh, these are not real values that you see here. I've just put in garbage because uh, obviously I don't want to expose my keys. And then we get into some of the details here. Um, so in the query, we can actually state what pieces of the recipe we're interested in. Uh, you can pull down a bunch of values, but if you're not going to use those values, you might as well not pull them down. You can actually specify the sets of values that you're interested in receiving uh, from the query. So really, I'm, I'm interested in just the recipe.equipment and recipe.mash, and those have all the values I'm looking for right now. So then we set up our, uh, our get, and the HTTPS API brewfather, and then we just append the batch ID that we're interested in, pass in our query params, and then we get our response JSON back. And then the rest of this is really just iterating through this response JSON to build uh, a big data string in the format that Brew Control wants it to populate its globals to move the values over. So I won't go into a, a gory amount of detail with all this stuff. Uh, I, I have this posted on my GitHub account, which I'll link in the description. Uh, so if you want to look this over in more detail, you certainly can. Uh, but I think it provides some pretty good examples on how to do this interop between Brewfather and some other third-party uh, control software that you might have running on your brewery, whether it be Brew Control or Craft, uh, craft Beer Pie or something else. Uh, this might provide a pretty good starting point for you. Yeah, uh, that's about it. I uh, hope that was worth watching. Do click subscribe, and I'll see you next time.